We are live. MCO talk tonight. It is ladies' night. Oh yes, it's ladies' night. Um, joining me, joining. I was gonna start. I was gonna sing a song, but then I said, forget it. Like, we're already running late. Let me just jump into it. Um, join, joining me and my lovely co-host Ashley tonight are three fantastic panelists. I have all women on my my panel, and I am. I probably won't get a lot of words in edgewise. It's like. Right now is my moment to shine, then you guys can just take over. But uh, I have Marissa Ferraraccio from oh, Tube. Up. I have Nikki Fika, and I have Sherry oh. Rohde. And Sherry, I got to finally be on a Hangout with you on CMGR Hangout. So we're going to start with Sherry. Introduce yourself. Tell us why you're here. Well, don't really tell us why you're here. Just tell us who you are. We know right, why you're here. Because <laughs> you said, hey, be here. Um, anyway, <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Sherry Rohde, and I am the community manager at Magento, which is an open source e-commerce platform, as well as co-produce um, CMGR Hangout um, every week, which is a broadcast for community managers. Nice, and we have Nikki all the way from the West Coast. Yes, I am from Arizona. Um, my name's Nikki Fika, and I am CEO, founder of Social Media Facelift, um, so I do social media management consulting for um, companies all across the globe. Nice, nice. And last but certainly not least, Marissa. Hi, guys. I'm Marissa Ferraccio. I don't say it as good as oh, <laughs> Sorry. Definitely not. <laughs> um, I'm the digital marketer for Zoomf. Um, I'm on the East Coast in the D.C. area. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about influence and drink some wine and have some fun. So thanks for having me. Ooh, drink some wine. All right, what is everyone drinking before we start? Uh, nothing. Water. Oh. oh, am I the only one? Oh, I better hide it. I have to work well. really well. I have <laughs> mojito in a mug, but it's mojito tea. Ooh, mo oh, mojito tea in a mug. Okay, well. <laughs> all right, so we tonight want to talk about influence, but because we talk about social influence and we talk about influencer apps and we talk about... Influence in every possible way, but you know what maybe we thought it was years ago before social media came about. So I figured let's talk about something different. And I want to know. We're going to start off the show by asking you who has been the biggest influencer in your life, and this can be anybody. And for those of you watching out there, they didn't know the questions ahead of time, so this question is coming from the heart. Um, who is the biggest influencer in your life? Uh, we'll start with Sherry. Oh, sure, put me on the spot. Is this revenge for when we had you on the show? This is totally uh, revenge for CMGR Hangout. I see how it is. All right. I've had so many, though. It's really hard to narrow it down. Um, but the person who introduced me to community um, and really mentored me down that path is probably the biggest influencer in my life, I would say, and that was Rhonda Rondo, who at the time was the community manager for Magento. Nice, okay. And what about Nikki over there in Arizona? Um, I'm going to go with the cliche answer. My biggest influencer in my life is my mom. But um, in the social media world, actually the person that I could ask questions to were answering them, um, anything, was actually the one and only Brian Fanzo. So oh. he, was, he was the one person that I was looking up to as far as, you know, getting to where I am and everything. So kudos to you. And Brian is a fellow MCEO uh team member, and he, I think he's helped everybody. I think for anybody in social media to say Brian Fanzo hasn't helped you, you probably aren't, like, doing social media right. <laughs> uh, so Brian Fanzo is my number one mentor in social media, but, uh, or influencer, but in my, I, I would say my father, but we're going to ask Marissa because it's not about me. <laughs> um, so mine's kind of tied between my parents. I know it's cliche, but it's so true. Um, my dad uh, taught me to like go after my dreams and to pursue what I wanted to do and to just keep fighting for it. And my mom taught me to just be strong and to be a fighter. So because of both of those influences, like I feel like I'm able to go after my dreams and stay strong and be independent and, and do what I need to do to better myself and everything. So definitely my parents. Well, those are uh, those are definitely solid answers. And Ashley, you know, well, let's just ask you too while we're at it, because now we're all going to give answers. Yeah, I mean, I guess for influence, um, you know, the obvious, like my parents are, you know, they were big influences in my life. They made me do stuff I didn't want to do, but you know, it made me a better person. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, for social, it's kind of weird because uh, 
you know, I was going through college as social was coming up, and so, you know, it's completely different, I guess, uh, for, like, adults at the time. People were like, oh, okay, social, I get it. But I was in a classroom full of people who thought that social was completely stupid. So, <laughs> you know, only the nerds or the people who were just kind of, like, off the wall really enjoyed social. And uh, I actually had this one professor, and he... <laughs> I mean, he would get teased left and right talking about, you know, the future of Facebook and, like, how to use Twitter for business and, um, you know, coding and designing things. And, you know, he got teased all the time, but uh, I don't know. I fell in love, so I was kind of an outcast. I I did have a lot of people who hated me in college because um, I kind of messed with the curve a little bit. But, you know, I love school, and, um, you know, he really taught me kind of the – the hoops and kind of what's coming about and how I can get involved and um, yeah I mean I've had a lot of influencers so it just uh, it's a long long story <laughs> yeah well that's, I mean listen influencers anybody can be an influencer so I you know personally not only have gained influence from my parents my grandparents but even you know anyone little kids can influence you um, you know sometimes I'm it, you know people ask me this all the time are they really an influence well yeah, they really can be an influence. Uh, I think it, it's really a matter of how you how you interpret it. Uh, but you know, some of you answered it, some of you didn't. So I'm gonna throw it out there. But how did that person? How do they impact your life? So dig a little, you know, go a little deeper into that. Maybe what was the you know biggest piece of advice they gave you, or what was uh, something specific that they did for you that opened your eyes and that's maybe helped you carry you through. And we'll. You know, we'll start with anybody. It doesn't matter. Whoever wants to jump in. Nikki looks like she's primed for this one. <laughs> I'll just go. Yeah. Um, I'll just touch on what my mom's done, um, how I look up to her as an influence. This is like Mother's Day dedicated, I guess. But um, Kind of, we, right? We, um, I grew up in Metro Detroit. We um, didn't have a whole lot of money. lived in a basement. Um, I really looked up to her. She ended up going to nursing school, um, did what she loved. And that's what I kind of got from her and learned from her is do what you love and you're not working a day out of your, of your life. So um, I, I definitely would um, just say that she is probably the biggest influencer in my life. I just told someone that today. I was like, you know what, when you're doing something you love, you're never going to work a day in your life. And they're like, wow, that really – and, you know, here it is. I've heard that a thousand times. But someone didn't hear that, and they thought it was, like, the greatest thing ever. And I'm like <laughs> – Pretty cool. I was like, I influenced somebody today. Uh, <laughs> what about Miss Ferracho? Um, so thinking about my dad. So he he was a, a teacher in a small private Catholic high school in a tiny little town in Pennsylvania, about to get married to my mom, and you know just kind of going with the flow of things. And all of a sudden, he decided, you know, I really want to be a lawyer. It's my dream. I'm. It's what I want to do. And against everyone's wishes and odds, he got into law school and moved across to a different state and left my mom and his parents, which is like not the Italian thing to do when you know 50 years ago. And um, he was 30 years old when he went to law school, so he just he dropped his entire career to become a lawyer, and he worked his butt off and he passed the bar and he's been successful ever since. And you know when I went to Penn State, it was communications was my degree and like Ashley said social media was kind of up and coming when I first started so I was I was a nerd I was kind of you know weird because I was doing social media and I was on Facebook and people were like what are you doing but I had a passion for it and I realized from my dad that go after what you want and you can make 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 of it what you want to make of it and he's definitely influenced me in my career path because I believe that even if maybe I make a mistake or I, I'm not completely happy I can always you know turn around and try something else and, and be happy. So definitely my dad in that sense. And I feel like that's such the millennial thing to do too. I mean, I, I didn't want to turn this into a necessary millennial conversation, <laughs> but I think it is. Like, Here um, you go. <laughs> it is. It really is. So personally for me, I mean, this week I've had a – actually a lot, last week I made a bold move to go out onto my own and start my own business. So it was just – and, you know, I'm 30, so it's like – what are, you, what are you doing? But to me, it was just, uh, it's like midlife crisis here, you know? Midlife crisis. We're going to yeah. be like 120. Calm down. Midlife <laughs> crisis. You know what? Enough from you over there. <laughs> Got to take risks. 
got to take risks. You have to take risks, but yeah. I, I, you know, it's a great point you made, Marissa, and we should always feel empowered. So, I, for me personally, and this this goes into, well, actually, Sherry, you know, Sherry still has to give, still has to speak up over here. I'm, I'm not gonna leave you alone now, Sherry. You know what? DMGR Hangout proved to be, you know, very critical in this selection of, of you tonight. Where are you over there? Oh, there she is. I'm here. <laughs> I was waiting for you to stop talking. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> I figure I need to assert myself a little bit tonight okay, or else I'll get totally squashed. This is a Shinzo episode. This is great. These um, guys are funny. So here's a question. Are Oh. Not to like throw you a curveball here and ask you a question, Please. but influence um, and mentors are kind of similar, right? But they're also a little bit different. So for me, like when I think about people who have influenced my life, I've had a lot of mentors along the way, and I think they've really helped me like grow into um, where I am now and really like encourage me. And I think really just people saying like yeah you're doing awesome you're doing great like do that like keep doing this and like helping you work through um, kind of just the the processes that you're trying to go through is really helpful and influential as well um, but that that turning point for me that led me down the path I am now was actually um, Rhonda as I already said and really it was just I was an active member of the community um, I got involved as on the forums became a forum moderator someone reached out to me and then um, she really befriended me and was like you have community written all over you do you even know this is a thing <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> and so she really took me under her wing and taught me about community as a profession, and that made a big difference for me. Well, so you, I, you didn't ask me a question. I know. I started to, and then I didn't, because I kind of answered it myself. But I don't know. What do you think? Do you think influence and mentorship are the same? I think it's totally different. I mean, you think of, like, a mentor is almost, uh-oh. Ashley's trying to meerkat. For those of you watching, Sorry. Ashley's also meerkatting, so she's probably having all sorts of like streaming issues. You right should now. see this. I have I've had a, almost two hundred people on this like feed thing. I'm trying to figure it out. There's people talking about my eyebrows. I don't know if that really has anything to do with what I'm talking about. But, are they Are they on fleek? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So I think. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so I think, you know, uh, with mentors and influencers, there's, mentors are kind of someone you go to for that professional sense, you know, where you're just kind of like, hey, um, what do you guys think I should do um, to move to that next step? Whereas like an influencer, it's, kind of, it's a organic, it's, you just kind of, it happens, and, um, oh, is it still echoing? No, you're good. Oh, sorry. Um, I just think that the two in the sense are different because one's sought out or is one is kind of, you know, the influencer just comes into your life and it becomes more of like a relationship, whereas I don't think you typically have that with a, a mentor in that sense. Or at least from me mentoring people, um, you know, I don't really have long relationships or close relationships with them. And that's interesting because I would say the mentors in my life I definitely built really close relationships with. and. We still keep in touch, even if they're no longer like an active role in my life. Okay. I would look at. Um... <laughs> no, no, I, this is good. I, this is good discussion. So, I mean, Marissa has something. Go ahead, Marissa. Um, I was just gonna say, like, for me, I agree with you, Ashley, a little bit that mentors are a little bit different than influencers because I think about my mentor um, since I joined Zoom. Uh, Amir has been a huge mentor for me. He, he just he was a community manager before his role now and I, I look to him for a lot of guidance and he inspires me to do certain things and, and makes me feel empowered like you were saying Vincenzo and you know for me I've built a good relationship with him where I can go to him and, and ask him questions and you know he's he's very candid with me so from like a mentorship you know view I think Amir mentors me to do better in my in my job but from an influential standpoint my parents you know empower me to be better and to, to just go after what I want. So, okay, well then that brings up a really good point. Is there a difference between like life influencers or life mentors uh, and people in business? Or can you learn from both? I mean, for me personally, I've gotten the best business advice 
and the best life advice from my grandfather, who has a second grade education, doesn't speak a word of English, like moved to this country when he was, you know, 57 years old. Um, but others would say, no, there's different. So what do you guys think about that? I mean, I can, I can chime in. I mean, uh, why is it? You might be echoing. I, I can't. I can't hear. It doesn't sound. You guys hear echo? I think you're echoing a little bit. I'll I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I think you know I've had personal and business, or I guess like schooling mentors, or sorry, I've had personal and you know schooling influence slash mentors. Um, the whole reason I got into the wine industry was a past relationship. Uh, you know, his, his family was into wine, and then that's how I ended up studying wine, and then that's how I ended up spending seven years of my life in wine. Um, but I think, you know, with business influencers, uh, it's just, it's different because you have that, per someone who's more personal is about, is likely to have more influence than you seeking out a different, like, let's just say I run into someone who's an influencer in finance. There's, like, a very slim chance in hell that I will ever work in finance. And that's because, <laughs> I, don't, that's because I don't have that, that personal connection. I don't have someone kind of hammering an idea into my mind all the time. I think, you know, the two influencers are kind of worlds apart in that sense. Well, you know, the other thing, too, with influencers or mentors, and, and you're right, you know, to a degree, yes, they're the same, but I also think, a mentor is more personal. Like somebody that mentors you is definitely uh, someone where you seek out. Whereas an influencer, somebody can influence you without really having a personal connection. Like let's face it, you might be. I, I'm looking through the feed now, and people are saying like Ted Rubin, Gary V. But I guarantee you, most of these people saying Gary V. probably have never actually had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Gary V. That's just a, I'm throwing that out there and making a total assumption. I feel uh, like he would be a pirate. <laughs> he would be a pirate? Yeah. He curses a lot. I just oh. remember I remember coming across him in college and being like, dude, this guy's a pirate. He curses more than I do. Gary, I, didn't he I mean, he's actually, incredibly smart. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. It was, you know? I think, I, I still think, I still think, though, that as an influencer, like Gary V is an influencer, but I personally wouldn't, you know, I think that a mentor is a closer relationship and is more of a long-lasting relationship, whereas an influencer, and again, this is my interpretation. I'd love to hear, you know, Sherry looks like she wants to bite my head off on this one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, as an inf you know, someone who's an influencer, um, it's a little bit more of a broad term. And actually, Lori, yeah, Lori just said it. Lori just, Lori, where are you? Um, she said, influencer is such a broad term. I think you can look to them for inspiration, but you look to a mentor in times of need. I completely agree 100%. I'm going to favorite that right now. I just favorited that, Lori, so if you're watching, thank you. That's my – her. I echo her thoughts. What do you guys think? I actually agree with that because you can be influenced by a lot of things that are a lot more temporary than mentorship. For example, the stuff behind me that you wanted to touch on, um, there's a lot of hiking gear behind me. <laughs> Um, that was influenced originally by my parents growing up, but the intense stuff, like the spikes over here, were influenced by my friend Talish, for sure, um, because he invited me to go mountain climbing constantly until I finally agreed to do so. So I have a lot of expensive hiking equipment in my room because someone influenced me into hiking. <laughs> but it's not, I don't really think that's the same as mentorship at all. Um, in the case the mentor's going to be on the mountain with you, hiking, or they're going to be climbing with you, right? Oh, yeah, he totally mentors me on the mountains, for sure. Otherwise, Crazy. I'd be dead. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but sometimes they are the same, yeah. They're, they are absolutely sometimes the same. Like with Rhonda, when she influenced me into it, then she turned that into more of a mentorship role. So that happens, too. Um, Ed, the Ed, at the Ed Henry says, Mentors guide, influencers do. What do you think? Wait, mentor, mentors guide and mentors guide influencers do. I don't know if I completely agree with that. I if people he, say it would be the. I would say it would be the opposite. I think they do both. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm looking through, and, and this is actually so. Sherry, the question that you posed is getting a lot of tra like traction here. 
It's almost like I write questions every week. It's <laughs> almost like you actually do this every, every week. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking through here. There's some good questions here on our good responses from what you're saying. So some Sorry people, to steal the show. You can go back to yours now if you want. I, don't, I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm shamefaced. I'm walking out the door. I should just bring my dog and let her sit here and you guys can like, talk about her. That's fine. Whatever. Um, so... Yeah, influence. Okay, so what do you think about that one? So now I know Ashley kind of said she thinks it's the opposite. And I wish Ed would kind of expand upon that a little bit. Well, one's more of just, hey, I'm going to kind of just throw some ideas your way. And the other is, here's how to execute the ideas. I think that's kind of the difference between the two. Yeah, but if I think about, like, Amir, who mentors me, he he did it, right? And he still does it in his in his day-to-day. -day. So... He, you know, he's a doer, but he's also influential in that sense where he's not doing it anymore because he's grown out of that role. Yeah, so, but then maybe that means he's, like, a world of both. Yeah. Like, I think, obviously, you can be both. Like, there's, you know, there's people that influ or influence, or there's people in your life that do both, um, but I think that when you, clear, you know, if someone was a hardcore mentor, they would be the doer because usually I would think of a mentor as someone you would be paying or incentivizing to help you. <laughs> or someone who's an influencer is like, hey, let me help you out or here's some ideas to make yourself great. I think there's that different dynamic, but I think people can be both. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I agree with you. I feel like um, the mentor to me educates me, and then maybe from there you can get that um, relationship, but. An influencer, maybe you have a relationship to begin with, and then that education will come later. Um, for me, I've always held to the phrase that um, to only really listen to advice from people who have the results that you want. And so I've never really allowed a mentor in my life that did not have the results that I want. And so they're very much there in a guiding role, but they've done what they're advising me to do and guiding me through. So it's almost like we're a lot more discerning with our mentors and who we let into our lives. And right. influencers, again, could be anybody. We may be influenced by someone in one aspect of our lives, but we are not going to listen to them in another aspect of our lives. And Mr. Shapiro made a comment. He said, all mentors are influencers, but not all influencers are mentors. Yes. <laughs> so, I would agree with that. So we finally came to a conclusion. <laughs> oh, Leo Marquez says, mentors have a personal touch in the relationship they are vested. Wait, mentors have? Yes, and I completely agree with, with that. Um, Leo, Leo's a good, good friend. Um, he's saying that a mentor is personally vested in your best interest. Whereas an influencer, you mean again? I, I still believe that an influencer, and again, we we started off the show completely going on who's influenced you. I didn't ask you to spe I didn't specify anything. You gave me the answers you gave me. But an influencer doesn't necessarily have to be someone that you're very very close to. And I completely agree with with that. Um, so thank you, Leo. And if you girls are gonna jump down my throat, don't please don't. I think with the influencer though when you ask someone who their influence is it's the top of the list is never just going to be someone random that's true. a really good point true no no that's a good that's a good like, point I would never be like oh my god Gary Vaynerchuk like made my life like, <laughs> but, that but wait a minute so. but some people would say that I, I know a lot of people I know that if I put this panel together if I put this <laughs> I'm right there with you Sherry if I are you call are you saying that to me? Okay. No, if, I, if I put this panel together, <laughs> if I had different people on this panel and I could name three individuals right now that I could have put on this panel that would have probably named Gary Vaynerchuk and have never had a conversation with him, have never had a tweet responded to by him. And again, I have no issues with Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm not saying anything. But He's going to totally watch this and be like, what the hell is going on? No, Gary, no, listen, it's fine. But my point is, there's a lot of people that would have, I mean, some people would be like, oh, the president of the United States is my biggest influencer. You know, like people that are in politics or maybe aspiring politicians. And I have friends that were aspiring politicians and they're like, oh, the president of the United States. Like, have you ever talked to him? No. Have you ever corresponded with him at all? No. So how is he, well, he influences me because I like the way he does this. Okay, so fine. But... 
you all answered it with someone very close, which, I, you know, again, I think that, and Rafael Hernandez, um, shout out to the U.S. Marine Corps for this one, but defining an influencer is challenging today. Traditional influencers, coaches, teachers, etc., are changing. So, yeah, I think it's very difficult to define exactly what is an influencer because now most of us answered that question as if it was a mentor, which led Sherry to, for those of you who are joining us late, Sherry decided to interject with, is there a difference between mentors and influencers? And I think it's it's a perfectly viable question to bring into this discussion. Um, so thank you. I mean, we can go on and on about this all day, but I wanted to ask you guys why you would identif uh, identify identify your biggest influencer as an actual influencer and what about that person is what attracted you but I think we didn't really answer it so <laughs> Sherry, what are we doing? I... <laughs> no, okay, so I, basically how why would you identify the person that you named so Marissa's like okay her father why would you say that he is an actual influencer would you call him an influencer, or would you just say he's a mentor? Again, now I th again, Sh Sherry has given us discussion another dimension. So thank you. Actually, um, we haven't heard from Nikki. Nikki's so quiet over there. <laughs> I've been talking. <laughs> why? So why would you identify your biggest influencer as an influencer, and what exactly about that person is it that you would say yes, that's an influencer? That person could influence others besides myself. That's a good question. Um, well, what I was saying before for, like, say my mom, um, she influenced me because she put, she made an impact in my life. So going from that, I learn from her every day. Um, I really take it with me, and it's something that I apply to my life. Um, and on the social side, it's the same thing with, you know, say, social influencers that I look to, um, something that I can imply to my life every single day and learn from them on a regular basis. And it's not so much, I mean, I think it is, it goes back and forth between a mentorship and an influencer because, you know, I look up to them, but they're also teaching me. Yeah. Sherry, well, Sher okay, we're going to unmute you, Sherry, because I want to hear you. I'm going to unmute you just so I can hear you. <laughs> I unmuted myself. Fine. But I wasn't saying anything. You didn't miss anything. No, I'm going to hear you say something right now, though. <laughs> um, didn't we already answer this? No, you did not. <laughs> you asked me a question, don't you remember? No. We what went on question? <laughs> We're in the never-ending circle of the mentor influencer. Yeah, we are now. Well, I just, I really, I'm looking Does to... Does anyone know. have a map? Can we get out of I this circle? This is MCO talk. There is no... Google Maps <laughs> does not work in this world. I want a diagram where we've gotten to. <laughs> If we were supposed to go from here to here tonight, we're like back Can someone here. on Twitter help us figure out what yeah, happened yeah. here? Um, no, why would you say that your biggest influencer is an actual influencer? Um, because she told me I had community written all over me and taught me what it was, and now I work in community. So that person educated you. Is it about education? Um... To some extent, before that, I didn't know it was a thing, right? So if someone's influencing you in something, they're really teaching you that it's there and that it's something that you want to be a part of your life. I think there's a, you know, there's definitely a lot to be said for education because, uh, like Raphael mentioned, traditional influencers or mentors were coaches, teachers, uh, and whatnot. So those were educators, and I think now. Things are blurring, and everyone can be an educator, not in the traditional sense of the word. Um, but Marissa, before we move on, I want to hear from you so that we all have, we're all on our roadmap. <laughs> um, for me, for my dad. Daddy O, uh, Papa, <laughs> Papa Ferraccio. <laughs> he was influential to me because he motivated action. And I think influencers Ooh. can talk the talk, Ooh. but if they don't get you to do something, then how influential are they, right? I mean, my dad showed me that I could do what I wanted to do, and he, sh and with his own experience, you know, motivated me to take the steps necessary, you know, to throw caution to the wind and do what I had to do to, you know, kind of take my own path. So you can say somebody is your mentor, but unless they motivate you to do something about it, then it's just 
it's just a lot of BS, I think. I, I don't know. Like, All right. Just... Well, I, I think the biggest quote out of there was, influencers motivate you to action. And I think that's something we kind of had to, like, that's, to me, that's, like, eye-opening to me. I'm, like, trying to tweet it right now as we're talking because <laughs> I thought that was great. But, um, all right, and I have to ask you this. I know we're going to go off on a little tangent here. How did you get the name Muffin Mouse? <laughs> Can we talk about that for a second? Because it's like it pops off every time you talk, and I'm like, how did you get the name Muffin Mouse? You know, I noticed that the other day because everyone on that nice little banner and the graphic was like Sherry, Ashley, like their actual names, and then there's me with Muffin Mouse, and I'm like, oh boy, this is I feel like a kid. Um, okay, so long story short, growing up, I used to read a book called. Muffin Mouse Goes on a Walk, or Muffin Mouse Goes to Pick Berries, or it was a series, okay? Where was so. this book? Because I never read a book named Muffin Mouse. <laughs> well, it was it was for girls, so I don't think you've oh. ever read it. Well, there's girls on my panel. Did any other girl on this panel read Muffin Mouse Goes to no. Get Her Nails Done? Okay. I thought I read every book in the children's section of the library, but I do not remember that one. <laughs> I was obsessed, so it just stuck. My mom would call me Muffin, Muffin Mouse. And it, it just took off, so even when I was playing basketball, like, the cheerleaders and the announcers would not announce me as Muffin. Um, and then the high school kids, like, when I got to senior year of high school, they shortened my name, and I don't know if it's appropriate to say it on air, but they would shorten my name from Muffin to, you know, something else. Um, so it just kind of stuck. And then when Twitter came out, Twitter came out my sophomore year of college, and my professor was like, we got to get on Twitter. So she got us all on Twitter. And she's like, you want to have an incognito name. Because at the time, privacy was still pretty uber important. And we didn't know social that well. So she's like, pick a name that isn't your first and last name. So I went with Muffin Mouse. And it's just kind of stuck. Fantastic. But now, none of you are ever going to forget that name. No. I, it's very hard to forget. I mean, it's like impossible to forget. So now the whole world knows. Great. We all know. Uh, well... All right, we got it. We started getting into it before, and the definitions of influencer. So, I switched it up purposely, and didn't ask the definition of an influencer ahead of the show because I think that would have kind of taken. You know, we would have all had like this one track, but now I want to define it. I want to say what exactly do you think an influencer is? We all have these answers now. We've all talked about, you know, who we think are influencers, why we think they're influencers. Well, what exactly is an influencer, and how is it different? And I, I, again, I did mention this earlier. How is that different from our personal to the business, and now social? Because I think social adds a whole third dimension of influencer. It's not, you know, you, it's not your typical. Anybody can be an influencer. You know, like Sherry is an influencer in my world. Nikki, Muffin Mouse. Ashley, you guys are all influencers in my world to some degree. Am I right or wrong? Better be. Yeah, just as drinking wine. <laughs> that was perfect. Right. So, so define it for me. Just give me a really, really quick def definition of it in each sense of the word. So there's three senses of the word. There's personal life, there's business, and now there's social. There's three separate aspects of it. Muffin Mouse, I want to hear from you. Oh boy, okay. I was just going to write it down. <laughs> Crap. Um, personal makes you a better person. So if you have a personal influence in your life, you are looking to them to just make you a better person. You're, you're growing from them. You're learning how to, you know, what morals and values you want to have, what ethics you want to keep. Um, so it's, it's personal makes you a better person. What were the other two? Remind me again. Uh, just like business in general, like traditional business and now social, which... Sure. I think okay. it's a whole third element. Business, it makes you. Uh, that's that's tricky. Uh, yeah. See, I asked a tough question <laughs> on the show. I think business, although Sherry asked me tougher ones, so Sherry's good. <laughs> I think business influencers uh, help you grow professionally, so you're not just stagnant and you're not just stuck in you know your cubicle doing your nine to five, like they help you see that you can be better and you can succeed. Social, I think social is influential because it's, it's recommendation, it's word of mouth via social media. So it gives you that ability to, to interact with people that you may never have found before and now that you're in, being influenced by somebody else, uh, they point you in that right direction. 
Um, Ashley, in in the show notes, she wrote she has um kind of adopting personas and and, and Ash, I'm gonna if you want to talk about this, you can. But uh, we all identify ourselves, or we all can identify ourselves as something. Um, you know, we can be visionaries, we can be innovators, we can be kind of like the early majority or the late majority, or we can be skeptics. Um, do you think that influencers fall into any one of those categories, and which category do you think maybe your influencer falls into, Nikki? Hey, do you want me to... No, oh, we'll new to, question. We'll talk about the question a little bit. So um, I was just kind of browsing around about influence and kind of reading some articles and journals about people talking about influence, whether it was like political or if it was um, just at home, um, that type of thing. And um, within it, they were talking about trends and creativity being, you know, the key indicators of someone who is becoming of an influencer. So now we're kind of stepping back away from you know, who are our influencers, but what actually, like, makes an influencer, like, what makes us influential. Um, so apart from personality, um, there are five, you know, key adopting personas that people were identifying with what was an actual influencer. So one of them was an innovator, which is typically a trendsetter, so someone who, um, you know, obviously they've fallen off the bandwagon, they're a little different, but you know, they somehow are able to just really lay out this perfect message of what they want to do and get people on board of it, uh, with it. Um, visionaries, you know, early adopters, they're not typically, you know, off the bandwagon, they're kind of, they're, they're hanging on, but they're skeptical. Um, and then there's, you know, early majority. Um, most of the people who come on board as soon as something goes live, so you know, for example, if, um, you know, if someone tells us there's a new app and we have to be on it and it's going to be the next big thing, that's, you know, the, the major rush of most social, um, I guess, um, influencers. Uh, and then we have the late majority, which is people who come on board when they realize they need to use it. And then laggards are usually people who do it, but they don't necessarily want to be on it. So I guess from this, um, you know, the whole different types of personalities and onboarding types of personas, uh, what do you believe that you are and do you have, you know, a specific example? Sorry, that was really windy. No, I, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll, it was, I'll it was go really in-depth and it really sparked my curiosity because there's a, um, I'll have to send you the video. There's like a long, uh, it's like 10 minute long video about it. Tweet and it's just really kind of going it. about what makes me influential or what makes other people influential and how, you know, are they, you know, completely off the wall or, you know, are they, um, you know, people who just wait for the safety net? I like the fact in that there's a difference between innovator and visionary because I would have said they were the same, but I guess they're really not. So an innovator is that person who's trendsetting. I would say I'm a visionary, early adopter, personally. Um, I'll get into things once they start, but I... I don't feel like I'm the first one to maybe come up with ideas, much like, hey, let's, you know, uh, the guys over there, they created the app. I was an early adopter of the app, so I would say I'm a visionary. That's my, that's me, uh, and I use a specific example. So, boom, I answered both your questions. <laughs> oh, come on. Like, get a little in-depth, like, what, um... It's not for me. I got three. I got three ladies over here that have to answer these questions. Okay. Okay. No okay. one wants to look at me or hear me. <laughs> I just. I want to give you as much crap as I can during this hour. <laughs> as co-host. Yeah. 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 All right. I. Th I think. Uh, I'm conservative. I definitely am. I don't know why. It's just I. Um. You know, I pay attention to the trends, and unless I truly actually believe in it, I'll. I'll adopt them early. But for the most part, I think I'm a little conservative. Like I think of Meerkat and Periscope when, when it first came out, uh, speaking with everyone in the office. And I remember Amir and our CEO pulled out uh, his iPhone 6 and started Meerkatting. And I was all concerned about privacy things. Like, well, guys, what's on the computers? You know, can they read our emails? What's on the whiteboard? Like, are we breaching security protocol? Like, what are we doing? And that's just that's just my conservative nature. And I like to be a little cautious. I like, you know, I, I worry about stuff like that. But once I see it taking off, I will definitely adopt it. 
but I think I'm definitely a bit more conservative in that in that sense. Oh, here we go. Oh, and for me, I feel like I'm more of a pragmatist. I think it's I don't even know how to say it, but um, it's probably for the fear of missing out kind of thing. Um, I don't know if it's like the millennial sense mind sense and everything, but um, really, if it's out there, I want to try it. Um, I want to see if I like it. I want to see if um, you know if it's really cool to me and, and I, what I value. So um, I don't really sit back. I like it. If I like it, I use it, and if I don't, then I'll throw it away. So we kind of so we have. Well, Ashley has to answer it too, but it looks like we have. Three of those hit, which I think is kind of crazy. I figured we all would have said, like, oh, we're innovators and visionaries. But I think that's great because I don't – I mean, personally, I don't think an influencer is, is – has to be either. I think you can be I, – I, I would like to do a study of what these actual influencers are, like what they fall into here. And I bet you not a lot of money <laughs> that they would fall into that those middle grounds because – they have to sit back a little bit and kind of be able to, and I think that's why you know Brian Fanzo is great because he's someone who he may not always be that trendsetter, but he's definitely a visionary, and sometimes he might be that early majority, and he always gets the full picture before giving an answer, and that's what I personally love about Brian Fanzo. If we want to talk about a shout out to iSocial fans, Brian Fanzo for a second, but uh, Sherry, you unmuted yourself, which means you're ready to speak. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. So I think I'm. It probably it depends on what it is, and also I feel like I get confused in the world of most of my world is trendsetters or early adopters, and so if I hang back a little bit, it feels more like a conservative or pragmatist, but it's still like way ahead of the majority of the world. <laughs> So it's kind of hard to like define it without context, but I would say probably somewhere between early adopt, early adopter and pragmatist. It just depends on what it is and what else in life is distracting me at the time, um, if I need a new toy to play with or not. Well, yeah, unless we're, we're, I mean, my head is always going 100 miles an hour, so I can be playing with everything at once. It doesn't even matter. But uh, this is a good question. Ash, what about you? Answer your own question. Uh you know, I typically, um, I feel that I'm somewhat of someone who will jump on the bandwagon really early. Uh, just, I, it, it kind of, I, you know, I flip-flop between, you know, someone who is an early adopt, um, I, I would say most, most cases I'm an early adopter. Um, I guess, you know, for me, the product that I work for is kind of an early adoption just because it's really different. Um, it's kind of, you know, people aren't so sure about it, and then there's a lot of competition. Um, but I think in a sense, you know, even when Google Plus came out, it was like, okay, I need to be invested in this because it's not because of the social network. It's for the search engine. You know, they, they deliver results based on the stuff that you're producing there. So not only is stuff, you know, fresh, it's, you know, stuff that I can control um, showing up in a Google search. Um, other networks, um, I mean... It just, it, it kind of depends. I usually don't really care what other people think. I kind of look beyond just what am I using it for, for what is it going to be used for. So, you know, you think of, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to I hate, like, brand throwing around what I'm working on, but, you know, with Hey Let's, a lot of people look at it and they're like, okay, there's, this app that's built on recommendations, uh, what are they going to do with those recommendations? And a lot of the utility that I see in the near future is the fact that we keep everything tweet length, the photos are really small, so everything's kind of in that wearable con context. So if you think about it, we're creating, you know, the future of how things are going to be generated for us to learn and discover things to do. So I think it's more about, you know, when you look at something, thinking about how it's going to be used instead of just being like, oh, I have to take, you know, with Snapchat. It's like, well, what is Snapchat going to be used in the near future? Instead of just, well, how do I use Snapchat? Funny, none of us said we were innovators. Well, I'm not a, I feel like an innovator would be someone who's like, I'm going to invent a social network and... Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well... Yeah, see, but that's it's actually even interesting that you just said that because 
like invent a social network. I think like what Elon Musk is doing, and this is because it's top of the news and it's top of mind right now. I was just reading about him. I'm obsessed with Iron Man and I'm obsessed with um, the Avengers and all that stuff. And I'm obsessed with Tony. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Tony Stark, and Elon Musk is by far like the. He's basically Tony Stark. And anyway, <laughs> anyway, that guy is an innovator. That man is a true trendsetter. So, yeah. and he influences on so many different levels. You know, um, sustainability and 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 technology. There's so many. And anyway, I can go on and on about that because I, I love that stuff. In fact, I'm. I think Iron Man is on right now in my house. I know. But uh, this is an interesting question. And I really want to know it. I know Ashley really wants to know it. Who do you, Nikki, want to influence? Who would you like to influence? You know, I I, um, I come from a big family. I would love to influence my little sisters. Um, I would love to influence my two-year-old. Um, and, you know, anybody who... <laughs> wants to follow along, um, hopefully in a good sense. Um, I've been in the past, the bad influence and all that stuff would be the good influence. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think I want my family to be influenced by my actions and, you know, that's one way of looking at it and, you know, what I do in my life, if they are going to look up to me or not. So um, that's basically it. I mean, you're going to have to go Muffin Mouse because Sherry has not ready herself to speak. muted herself? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I love your answer, Nikki. I love how family-oriented you are. That's awesome. Um, my answer is I want to influence the up-and-comers. I want to influence those 16, 17, 18-year-olds who you know are close to college or aren't really sure of their path, and they want somebody to, to, to let them know that it's okay to make mistakes, and it's okay to try to do new things. It's okay to, you know, to travel the world or to move someplace strange and, and to do something that's going to better yourself because in the end, it will make you stronger. And I want to influence them to understand that there's no right or wrong way and that they have to kind of, they're in charge of their own destiny. So I just, I want those kids that aren't sure what path to take to be influenced by me and understand that, like, nothing was perfect and that, you, you know, you kind of build, you kind of build your own destiny. So I definitely want the uh, the young the young millennials. Are they even millennials? Are they Gen Z? How do we how do we Gen Z? Uh, Gen Z. Ashley is a young millennial. So I want <laughs> yeah the, the the young the, the kids in high school that just need some direction that's, and that yeah, to leave like in Z uh, Z. Is that Gen? Okay, well, that generation. They're oh. Gen Z. I want you guys keep that. track of these. Every time someone looks this up, I have to look it up to find out what it is. I, I do. Know, I do too. I totally is. do, Sherry. If I didn't run a show called MCO Talk, I would have to look it up every time. <laughs> every time. I'm like, I'm me. I don't know what generation I am. It's not important. I don't really know. I'm just. Ooh, I like that, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> are, right. we, are we going to hear from the great Sherry? <laughs> This question's hard. I don't like it. hard. Who do you want to influence? Um, I guess I could be like super cheesy and say that because um, I work with the team at CMGR Hangout, like I really hope that I influence community managers into like properly building communities and knowing how to grow in their careers. I see. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because, and, and actually, there's a really good. Hold on. Was there a question? Someone asked me a question. Let me see. It might fit in. Uh, how does group think impact behavior and opinions? That was from Raphael. Um, we may not have time to actually go into that question, but no, you know what? You're, you want to influence your team, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think everybody wants to influence somebody at some point of their lives, and right now you want to influence your team. Maybe when you have a family, you would want to you know, influence people like Nikki. Um, so I... I I think it's just it's how you look at things. I know for me personally, I, I echo the sentiments of Muffin Mouse over here. Um, I totally want to influence the next generation. Um, I, I think there's so much for them to be influenced about, and the world is so different to them already, and, and it's just, and again, social and things like this have, have changed that world so much. So 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, uh, Marissa. Uh, I want to, because we are running close to the top of the hour here, I want to get to our life hack. And if you've watched, well, Ashley's obviously seen it because she's co-hosted it with me, so she knows. No. But uh, give us a little bit of insight on how you prepare yourself for success. So kind of how you start your day. Uh, that's usually how most people answer the question. But again, answer your question however you'd like. How do you start your day for success? How do you prepare yourself and set yourself up for success? Me, personally, every morning I have to not look at the phone. So that's how I, I start in the morning. I roll out of bed. I don't look at my phone. And I will take the dog for a walk. Before it was taking the dog for a walk, I would get up. I would, do, I would stretch, do some push-ups, do some sit-ups, brew myself a pot of coffee, and I would sit in silence for about 10 minutes, you know, just with my cup of coffee and think. That's how I set myself up for every day. Before I started turning on all of these, you know, the television, the computer, the phone, and then it's like, okay, then once you turn those things on, you can't turn them off. So that's how I set my day up, is kind of calming myself down before allowing it to go crazy and then it just never shuts off all day long. That's my life hack. Ash. <laughs> Ash. Yeah. My buddy. <laughs> I mean, every, I, I mean I've, I've said it before. I mean, my... But you haven't said it to these folks. I know. Well, um, I mean, the biggest thing for me is I love, love, love running. I mean, that's one way for me to kind of detox, um, you know, after a long day or before a long day. So... Um, you know, I put on my jams, I listen to music way too loud, run to the sunset or to the sunrise here in the city. Blessed to be able to do that every day and um, just kind of get my day going from there. What do you do, Nikki? I want to know what you do in Arizona. You know like, what? You go play in the I, desert? Like play in the I, sand? I would play in the sand every day. I was in the desert. What? <laughs> build like sand castles in a desert. Dude, and it's not it's not like everything's a desert there. <laughs> also, have you ever tried to make sand castles out of clay? Because it doesn't go well. No, but I'd like to try it. I'm gonna try it like that. <laughs> He's from Connecticut. He doesn't understand. <laughs> wow. All right, Miss San Francisco. What at least I know Arizona isn't the desert or like an entire <laughs> desert. <laughs> All right, sorry, Nikki, we cut you off. Oh, no, that's totally fine. To start off, actually, I end my day um, to start off my day in the morning. So um, I actually make a little list. This is blank, so this is for today. Um, but that is basically my plan for tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I set my day out. I, things happen in the morning, so um, I can always be prepared at night and go, get rolling when I wake up or, you know, whenever it's time to get work. Oh, did we lose? Did we lose? Oh, did we lose you, Nikki? Can you answer the question again? Because it was. I gonna... think you did lose me. It was really weird. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, basically, I start my day off, or I end my day, um, the way I want to start the next day. So I plan it out. I make a list of goals. Um, I kind of make um checklist and everything of what I need to get done the next day and um, just start it from there because I know things can happen in the morning, um, not off on the right track, rolled out of the wrong side of the bed. Um, so I really get started the night before. The night before? That's, I probably should take that. That's I write all these life hacks or I think about these life hacks. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> what about you, Sherry? What do you do? I want to know what you do because clearly you're on point right now and like, getting late over here, and you're just, like, sassing me all the time. Tyrell. Um, so is this just for, like, the day or success in general? However, whatever you want to answer. I mean, I answer it for the day because that's what I do. Like, that's how I set myself up for success for the day. But you can answer it however you like. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of main things that I do, really, and one is focusing on um, 
goals for what I'm working on and just making sure that I have those so that I'm not just running by the seat of my pants, which I tend to do if I don't force myself to be organized. And the second one is just protecting mental health by doing things like running and biking and hiking and just taking that time to get some fresh air and to like get away from everything I'm working on and focus on it. So yeah, those are the two main things. I think a lot of people forget to go outside. It's amazing. It's it is so, so nice. I can no. tell the difference if I haven't for a while. Like, it's just very obvious to me. Oh, totally. I, I you know, I I try to go hiking. Um, I try to go at least once a week. But now, now that I totally have the freedom, I'm gonna be going all the time. But I feel <laughs> completely different when I do. And that's one specific activity. I have, but hiking, go for a run, go to the gym, whatever. I, the day is totally different. Like right now I'm completely energized. I was talking to Ashley before you guys all joined, and I was like, I just got back from the gym. Like earlier today I went, and I'm like, I feel great. I feel completely energized. I feel like I, I look better. I feel better. I'm like my mind is working. And it's, it's funny because for a while I, I, I missed the gym, and your mind, it was funny. You know, you, you said, Sherry, your, you know, your mental health, your mind like slows down. I completely think that, you know, the physical activity, and I'm sure there's, like, science and doctors that all say the same thing, so I'm sure I'm just repeating somebody, but your mind definitely, definitely needs to be exercised um, or has to, reaps the benefit of physical exercise, so that's so that's awesome. I think we lost Marissa, um, technology, being millennial, we suck sometimes, but uh, I do want to, so Marissa's gone. Sorry. Thank you, Marissa, if you're watching or listening. You rock. Uh, really appreciate you being on. Actually, I really appreciate all of you being on tonight. It was a, it was an interesting topic. Again, for those of you who are still sticking around watching us, we're a little bit past the hour because we started late, but we don't have scripted questions. No one, you can ask all of these fine ladies. They all just got the questions maybe 20 minutes before the chat started. And not even that. Not, well, you didn't even get it. I think you got it like the moment the chat started. And that's how we keep this chat as real as possible. Um, and the questions are just guidelines. They're totally not scripted, you know, like I read off the list. But uh, next week, I'm sticking to ladies' night again. And it's going to be, we're going to have the month of the female this month. And I'm going to be the only guy in every chat. But I have a fantastic panel. I want to promo this panel because I'm really excited to have Rachel Miller, uh, Michelle Killebrew, and Britt Mycallion uh, joining myself and Ashley. And we're going to be talking about, uh, I don't want to tell you what we're talking about yet, actually. Well, maybe I should. Humanization of business. And these ladies are going to give us a lot of insights. I'm really, really excited to kick that show off next week. I'll be promoing it later in the week, but... Uh, if you joined us late and you missed out, watch the replay on YouTube. I'll be blasting it from my Twitter accounts as well as the Millennial CEO accounts. And on behalf of myself and the Millennial CEO team, thank you for joining us on another week of MCEO Talk, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care, guys. Bye.